What's up everybody, Tree City Trading here with another video for the Zen ecosystem. Today we're going to be discussing how we can set up our own nodes on the X1 DevNet. First, we need to understand what a node is in regards to a blockchain. It's important to note that there are different types of nodes, including full nodes, light nodes, and minor nodes. Basically what all nodes do is store a copy of the blockchain while verifying transactions to keep the blockchain alive. Nodes communicate with each other through peer-to-peer -peer network, which allows the exchange of information and maintain consensus on the state of the blockchain. Node operators can earn rewards for their participation, and they play an important role in maintaining the security of the network. It's important to note that running a node requires technical knowledge and resources, such as computing power. Today, with our X1 node, we're gonna be using a, what's called a VPS, which is a virtual private server. It's basically a hosted server in the cloud. And for our VPS service, I'm using a very cheap service called Contabo. It's a small company out of Germany, and they only charge $10 a month for a light VPS package. And shout out to our friends over at Zenmon and Zen.pub for putting together this awesome tutorial that we're going to follow today. Here's the tweet with the link that shows how to install your own X1 DevNet. So I went ahead and configured my VPS server with Ubuntu, and now I'm ready to begin the setup of the X1 DevNet with the Polygon Edge RPC server on Ubuntu Linux. And it's important for me to understand not only how to copy and paste these commands, but also what the commands do. We're going to be talking about Ubuntu server, virtual server specifications, IP addressing and NAT, and all these different technical terms so you can understand exactly what's happening when we're setting up this node. So you can see in this document from March of 2023, it basically covers how to run Polygon Edge client that'll connect to the X1 DevNet. So let's see what it has to say about the X1 DevNet. X1 is a fast, simple, and secure EVM-compatible network for the next generation of decentralized applications powered by Polygon Edge. If you're interested in setting up an X1 DevNet Polygon Edge RPC server on Ubuntu Linux, this guide will provide you with a step-by-step -step process to do so. So as I mentioned, we're going to need some type of server that's running Ubuntu to run this node. It can be a local computer that you reload with Ubuntu, but I prefer running a cloud server. Cloud servers are typically more reliable. If I lose internet or power at my house, then my node would go down if it's at my house. Usually cloud servers have a guaranteed uptime or some type of failover, so you won't lose connection to your node if you lose internet at your house. This document lists a couple different cloud service providers. Uh, some The most popular ones are definitely AWS and Google. There's also Azure, IBM Cloud, Digital oceans pretty cheap i really couldn't find anything cheaper than contabo and i've used it for other applications so i know it's reliable so we're going to go ahead and move forward with our contabo node now there is a minimum recommended configuration and these are the specifications that your node will need to run it's going to require at least two to four cpu cores it'll require four to eight gigabytes of ram you'll need at least 100 gigabytes for every 10 million blocks and one to two terabytes of bandwidth per month which is the amount of data used they also recommend an internet speed of at least 10 megs per second. So let's take a step back and look at that storage requirement, the 100 gigabytes for every 10 million blocks. This could get expensive if the blockchain gets really huge. What we can do is check how many blocks there are on the blockchain explorer. So we'll go ahead and open the link to the blockchain explorer. And currently you can see there's about 5 million blocks created so far. The setup says it's 100 gigs for every 10 million blocks. So if this blockchain gets a lot of use, we could see it grow to hundreds of gigs, if not terabytes in size. That future growth is going to be something to keep in mind. So these instructions and this video are for Ubuntu Linux only. It's possible to run this on other operators systems, but we're just going to stick with Ubuntu for now. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the networking. These nodes are required to be public facing to the internet. That means that anybody on the internet will be able to talk to your node. In order to keep your node secure, it's recommended to keep ports closed on the firewall. However, these two ports will need to be opened. What that means is you're basically letting in traffic from the internet onto these two ports into your machine. The first thing we need to do is use PuTTY to connect to our server via SSH, and then we'll log in. So I'll go ahead and log in here. And now you can see the console for my Contabo VPS. Just so you know, this one's only temporary. I'm just using this for the making of this video and everything in this is gonna be reset when I'm finished. So the first prerequisite is to make sure these two ports are open on the firewall. To open the ports on the firewall with an Ubuntu, we're gonna to have to run these two commands. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste these commands right into PuTTY. So here, 
Now that I ran the commands to open the ports on the firewall, we can see that the rules were updated successfully. It says it twice because it updates not only the IPv4, but also the IPv6 firewall. Now we can move on to step one. The first step is to create a folder called X1. That's about as simple as it gets. We're just creating a folder called home slash X1. So we'll go ahead and copy these commands. The first command will actually make the directory and then the CD command navigates to that directory. And now you can see we navigated to that directory successfully. So let's go ahead and move on to step two. In step two, we're gonna download the latest release of the Polygon Edge node from the Fair Crypto GitHub repository. We'll do this using the wgit command. This command will actually connect to GitHub and download the tar.gz file, which is a compressed file similar to a zip. So the command completed successfully. Now that we have the file downloaded to our VPS, we'll go ahead and run this tar command to extract the file to the folder. This is similar to unzipping a zip file or a RAR file in Windows. So the command was successful. We can see it unzipped license, the readme, and the Polygon Edge client. Now we can move on to step three. Before running the X1 DevNet server, we need to initialize the data folders for IBFT and generate validator keys. To do this, run the following command in your terminal. So what that means is it's basically gonna create a wallet for your account. And on the screen, it's gonna put your keys, one of them being your public key or your validator address. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste this into our VPS. And now that we ran the secrets initialize command, it actually prints out the public key, the BLS public key, and the node ID of our new node. We're gonna wanna copy and paste those and keep them somewhere safe. This is generally information that you're gonna wanna keep private, although some of it is publicly accessible. And now that we completed step three and in initialized our data folders for IBFT and generated the validator keys, we can move on to step four. In step four, we download the Genesis file for the X1 DevNet. You can see this file is actually hosted on an Amazon web server and it's just a JSON file. A JSON file is a type of JavaScript file which is typically used to define certain types of data. If you paste that address into your browser you can see what's contained in this JSON file. So you can see things like the name of the blockchain, the timestamp is zero, pretty much everything's clean. It has the chain ID for the blockchain, the epoch size, and it basically just has different information about the X1 DevNet blockchain. So to grab that file, we'll copy and paste it right into our PuTTY console session. So it ran the command, it resolved the name server, it downloaded the file, and now this genesis.json is saved to our computer. Now in step five, we're gonna go back and talk about our networking knowledge again. So as we mentioned earlier, the internet needs to be able to see your node. And to see your node, it needs to know the IP address of your server. So when we start the Polygon server, we have to define the IP address that our node's running at. This is actually done in this step right here, the dash dash nat IP address of your server. We're not actually going to write this, we're gonna put in the IP address of our server. So to do that, I'm gonna run these commands the first one actually starts the server. The second one initializes the data directory. This one actually references the JSON file. Grab all those characteristics. This one sets one of the ports. This one sets the other port that we opened. And now we need the IP address of our server. So I'll go ahead and paste this with the replaced IP address of my VPS. I'll post the seal. I'll post the price limit. We'll post the block time. And we'll set the log level. And success. Now we've started the node and connected it to the X1 DevNet. You can see that it's currently processing blocks on the DevNet. The block numbers are really small because it has to process the entire blockchain before it can see the new blocks. And that's how it builds consensus. And they added a note here that says the log level is set to info, which means that the server will output only important messages. I imagine they have some different log levels off to turn them off completely or verbose to get even more information. So now I'd like to set it up as a service. So I, if I ever reboot the server, it'll start the service automatically. If I ever close my session, it'll continue to run the node in the background. And to do that, we have to tell it to run it as a service. So step six covers how to run a validator node. We may try to do that later on, but we'll go ahead and move on to step seven to create a service that starts the Polygon Edge server automatically. So step one, we open the terminal window to our Ubuntu machine using SSH. So now we'll create the new service file by copying and pasting the sudo nano command. In the nano text editor, paste the following service definition. Just make sure to replace your IP address. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste this. Make sure to replace 
your IP address with your actual IP address. Also in the user field, you want to replace that with the user that'll be running the service. And now we'll save it by hitting control X, then Y, then enter. So now we created the service file, which will actually run the service. The next step is to reload the system daemon by typing the command sudo system control daemon reload. Now we can start the polygon edge service. And finally, onto step eight, we can check the service is running by typing this command. And all right, once we run the command to see if the service is running, and here we can see the service is active and running since five seconds ago. And finally, I'm going to configure the service to start automatically, just in case my uh, VPS ever um, reboots. So we'll go ahead and hit Control C to exit. Go ahead and paste the sudo command in there. Now it's created the startup link for the Polygon Edge service. All right, so now what we can do is test it by coming over to MetaMask and adding the RPC that we just created. So what I'm going to do is click on the circle in the top right, and I'll go down to settings. Then I'm going to click on networks. I'm going to add a new network and we're going to use the IP address of our node. So I'll go ahead and add a network manually. It'll be the X1 DevNet. The RPC URL is going to be the IP address of the node we just created with the port number that we opened. So we'll paste the IP address in, we'll add a colon, and we'll add the port number that we unblocked, which is 8545. So I'm telling it to use this IP address with this port number. And if we come back to the instructions, we can see the chain ID is 202212. And finally, we'll go ahead and paste in the block explorer. And I can actually see an XN balance by connecting to the X1 DevNet, which is an awesome sign. That means my RPC is working. It's, it's syncing with the blockchain. It may not be 100% synced yet, but it did connect to MetaMask and I see some activity here. So that's a good sign. And that's the conclusion. We successfully set up an X1 DevNet Polygon Edge RPC server and connected our MetaMask to it. Maybe in the future, we'll revisit step six and try to run a whole validator node on the X1 DevNet. But for now, I'm satisfied with my node running in my VPS on Contabo. So I hope you guys take something away for this. Away from this, blockchains need nodes to run on. And that includes DevNets and Testnets. But I highly encourage you to look into how, what it takes to run a node, what it takes to run a validator. And that way we can continue to make X1 and Zen a strong network. Thank you for watching. Tree City Trading's out.